Jailbreaking an iPhone once felt like a rite of passage for tech enthusiasts. At its core, jailbreaking is the process of removing software restrictions imposed by Apple on iOS, iPhone's operating system. This allowed users to install unauthorized apps, customize the interface, and access features not available through the official App Store. However, what once was a bustling subculture within the tech community has seen a noticeable decline, so let's find out why. When Apple first released iPhone in 2007, it was a revolutionary device, but it came with its share of limitations. The App Store didn't exist yet, and users were stuck with a few pre-installed apps. Ambitious developers saw an opportunity to push the boundaries of what iPhone could do. Just a few days after the original iPhone's release, the first jailbreak was introduced, allowing users to run third-party applications. This initial wave of jailbreaking was driven by a desire for customization and expanded functionality. One of the earliest and most noticeable jailbreak tools was iPhone Dev Team's Pwnage tool, which enabled users to create custom firmware packages that could be loaded onto their devices. This tool set the stage for more sophisticated jailbreak methods in the years to come. Another significant milestone was the release of Jailbreak Me by developer Comex in 2010. Jailbreak Me was a web-based tool that allowed users to jailbreak their iPhones by simply visiting a website and sliding to unlock. This ease of use brought jailbreaking to a broader audience and significantly lowered the barrier of entry. Between 2010 and 2013, jailbreaking hit its stride. Tools like Jailbreak Me and Green Poison made the process more accessible to the average user. The jailbreak community was thriving, with forums buzzing with discussions, guides, and the latest tweaks. The Cydia App Store, created by Jay Freeman, became the go-to hub for jailbroken apps and modifications. During this time, jailbreaking was not just a way to bypass restrictions, it was a creative outlet for developers and a means for users to tailor their iPhones to their exact needs. Cydia offered a wide range of apps, tweaks, and themes that allowed users to customize their iPhones in ways that were not possible with stock iOS. For example, the SB Settings tweak provided quick access to system settings, while Winterboard allowed users to apply custom themes to their devices. These tweaks and apps were often created by independent developers who were passionate about pushing the boundaries of what iPhone could do. The jailbreak community also saw the emergence of dedicated forums and websites such as Mod My Eye, iPhone Dev Team Blog, and Redmond Pi. These platforms served as hubs for users to share their experiences, ask for help, and discover new tweaks and apps. The sense of community and collaboration was a significant factor in the popularity of jailbreaking during this period. One of the main draws of jailbreaking was the ability to customize iPhone's appearance and behavior. Users could change the look of the home screen, add widgets, and even modify system fonts. Themes and skins allowed for a level of personalization that iPhone severely lacked at the time. For example, the Winterboard tweak enabled users to change icons, wallpapers, and even system sounds. Another popular tweak, Spring to Mize, allowed users to customize nearly every aspect of the home screen, including the number of icons per row, the size of icons, and the animation effects. Jailbreaking opened the door to apps and features that weren't available in the App Store. This included everything from file managers and torrent clients to emulators for playing classic video games. For many users, the appeal was accessing tools that Apple had restricted without having to switch to Android. Another example was iFile, a powerful file manager that allowed users to browse and manage the file system of their iPhone. Another popular app was MXTube, which let users download YouTube videos for offline viewing, a feature that was not available in the official YouTube app. In the early days, many iPhones were locked to specific carriers, and jailbreaking provided a way to unlock these devices for use with any carrier. This was particularly attractive for international travelers who needed the flexibility to switch SIM cards. For instance, the Ultra Snow tool, developed by iPhone Dev Team, allowed users to unlock their iPhones and use them with any GSM carrier. This provided a significant cost-saving benefit for users who wanted to avoid expensive roaming charges while traveling abroad. Jailbroken devices could benefit from various tweaks that enhanced functionality. Features like multitasking, which were not initially available on iPhones, could be added through jailbreak tweaks, making the device more powerful and versatile. 
One of the most popular tweaks was Activator, which allowed users to assign custom actions to various gestures and button presses. For example, users could configure a double tap on the home button to launch a specific app or perform a system action. Another example is IntelliScreen, which added a customizable information panel to the lock screen, displaying notifications, weather, calendar events, and more. One of the most significant factors in the decline of jailbreaking has been Apple's relentless focus on security. Over the years, Apple has continuously updated iOS with new security features and patches to close vulnerabilities used by jailbreakers. Each new iOS release comes with enhanced security protocols, making it harder for jailbreak developers to find and exploit new loopholes. Apple also introduced hardware-based security measures like the Secure Enclave, which further complicated the jailbreaking process. These advancements have made it increasingly difficult and less appealing for both developers and users to pursue jailbreaking. For example, the release of iOS 9 in 2015 introduced a new security feature called Rootless, which restricted access to certain system files even for users with root privileges. This made it much more challenging for jailbreak developers to modify the core system and create stable jailbreaks. Another reason for the decline is that many features once exclusive to jailbroken devices have been incorporated into iOS. With the release of iOS 5 in 2011, Apple introduced Notification Center, which provided a unified place for managing notifications, a feature that was previously available only through jailbreak tweaks like Lock Info. Similarly, the introduction of Control Center in iOS 7 provided quick access to system settings, reducing the need for tweaks like SB settings. As Apple continues to listen to user feedback and integrate popular features into their updates, the need for jailbreaking declines. Plus, the App Store has become more robust, with a wider variety of apps and more lenient regulations. In fact, Apple recently began allowing emulators for the first time, which just gives iPhone users one less reason to jailbreak. Legal and ethical issues have also played a role in the decline of jailbreaking. Although the act of jailbreaking is legal in many countries, it often voids the device's warranty and can lead to security vulnerabilities. Plus, there are ethical concerns related to piracy, as jailbreaking can be used to download paid apps for free. This has led to a negative perception of jailbreaking among both users and developers. In the United States, jailbreaking was granted an exemption under the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, allowing users to legally jailbreak their devices for the purpose of installing non-Apple-approved software. However, the legal landscape remains complex and varies by country, adding an element of risk for users. Also, there have been cases where malicious software was distributed through jailbroken devices. In 2015, a malware called KeyRaider affected over 225,000 jailbroken iPhones, stealing Apple ID credentials and other sensitive information. Incidents like these have raised concerns about the security implications of jailbreaking and discourages users from participating. While the jailbreaking community itself, once a vibrant and active group, has also seen a decline. Many prominent developers who were instrumental in the community have moved on to other projects or were actually hired by companies like Apple themselves. As a result, fewer jailbreak tools are being developed and the community has shrunk. Comex, the developer behind Jailbreak Me, was hired by Apple in 2011. Plus, other prominent developers like GeoHot and Chronic Dev team members have shifted their focus to other areas, leading to a decline in new jailbreak releases. Plus, user interest has shifted. With the continuous improvement of iOS, many users find that their needs are adequately met without the need for jailbreaking. So the risk to reward ratio has changed, leading to a decrease in the number of people willing to risk jailbreaking their devices. Several jailbreaking tools have had a significant impact on the community and the broader iPhone ecosystem. Tools like Evasion and Pangu were particularly notable for their ease of use and broad compatibility. These tools often sparked waves of interest and activity within the community, driving innovation and collaboration among developers. Evasion, released by the Evaders team in 2013, was one of the most popular jailbreak tools for iOS 6. It supported a wide range of devices and was praised for its simplicity and reliability. The tool was downloaded over 7 million times within the first four days of its release, highlighting the widespread interest in jailbreaking at the time. 
Pangu, developed by a Chinese team, was another significant jailbreak tool that gained popularity in 2014. It provided a jailbreak solution for iOS 7.1 and later iOS 8, and it was notable for being one of the first jailbreaks released by a non-Western team. Pangu's success demonstrated the global appeal of jailbreaking and the collaborative nature of the community. But Jay Freeman, also known as Sarek, is one of the most influential figures in the jailbreaking community. He created Cydia, the alternative app store that became a cornerstone of the jailbreak experience. His contributions, along with those of other developers, helped shape the early days of iPhone jailbreaking. Cydia provided a platform for developers to distribute their apps and tweaks, and it quickly became an essential part of the jailbreak ecosystem. Freeman's commitment to maintaining and improving Cydia over the years has been instrumental in its success and longevity. Other notable figures in the community include Geohot, who developed the first public iPhone jailbreak in 2007, and Comex, who created Jailbreak Me. These developers, along with many others, have played a crucial role in advancing the capabilities of jailbreaking and making it more accessible to a broader audience. There have been several key events and turning points in the history of jailbreaking. One such event was the release of Jailbreak Me, a web-based tool that made jailbreaking as simple as visiting a website. This significantly lowered the barrier to entry and brought jailbreaking to a wider audience. Another notable turning point was the release of iOS 9, which introduced several security features that made jailbreaking much more challenging. This marked the beginning of a decline in the frequency and availability of new jailbreaks. The introduction of Apple's Bug Bounty program in 2016 was another significant event. The program offered financial rewards to security researchers who discovered and reported vulnerabilities in iOS. This incentivized many talented developers to work with Apple directly rather than releasing jailbreaks, further contributing to the decline in new jailbreak tools. Today, jailbreak releases are few and far between. When they do appear, they often come with significant caveats, such as limited device compatibility or the need to remain on an older version of iOS. The process has become more complex, requiring a higher level of technical expertise. The Check Rain jailbreak, released in 2019, is based on a hardware exploit called Checkmate that affects older iPhone models up to iPhone X. While CheckRain provides a reliable jailbreak solution for these devices, it's not compatible with newer models like the iPhone 11 or 12, limiting its appeal to a smaller subset of users. So the current demographic of jailbreak users tends to be more tech-savvy and willing to take on the risks associated with jailbreaking. These users are often motivated by a desire for specific customizations or functionalities that are still not available in iOS like changing the system font with the BitaFont tweak or adding additional biometric authentication options with BioProtect. Others may seek specific functionalities like the YouTube++ tweak to download YouTube videos or enabling tethering on carriers that don't officially support it. However, the overall number of users has decreased compared to the peak years. So while jailbreaking is still around, it continues to pose several challenges and risks. Security remains a primary concern, as jailbroken devices are more susceptible to malware and other threats. Plus, the legal and warranty implications can be a deterrent for many users. The shrinking community means that support and resources are not as readily available as they once were. This can make the jailbreaking process more daunting for newcomers. And while there are still active forums and websites such as Reddit's R Jailbreak, the level of activity is not as comprehensive. This can make it more challenging for users to find reliable information and assistance when they have issues. So the story of iPhone jailbreaking is one of creativity and the power of motivated grassroots community. It began as a way for users to push the boundaries of what was possible with their devices, rebelling against the limitations that were often arbitrarily set by Apple. But this effort has become less and less necessary over the years, as iOS began including many of the features users wanted. And while it may not be as relevant, its influence is undeniable. It's clear that jailbreaking played a significant role in the development of iOS, and many features we take for granted today were first introduced by the jailbreaking community. As we look to the future, it's likely that jailbreaking will continue to exist in some form, but its heyday is almost certainly behind it. This is Greg with Apple Explained. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.